Hey guys, this is AC Server Stack, and today what we're looking at is the superheat and subcooling on a heat pump in cooling and in heating mode. All right, I'm going to start in heating mode, and then I'm going to finish in the cooling mode. So what you have is low pressure, low temperature vapor refrigerant enters into the vapor compressor. It comes out as a high pressure, high temperature vapor, which therefore the temperature ends up following the pressure. Anytime you have pressure rise, temperature will rise. Anytime you have temperature rising, then pressure will rise. So anyway, it comes out of the vapor compressor as a high pressure, high temperature vapor refrigerant. It comes through the discharge line to the one side of the reversing valve. Okay, It's the side that has only one pipe attached to it. That is the discharge line. It goes through the reversing valve to the service valve and then out of the outdoor heat pump and on its way out of the outdoor unit as a high pressure, high temperature vapor refrigerant. It then comes to the indoor coil, which is now the condenser coil. It used to be called the evaporator coil. Now it's called the condenser coil because we're in heat mode. It comes into the condenser coil, which is actually the indoor coil is a high pressure, high temperature vapor refrigerant, and it starts rejecting heat into the conditioned air. As it rejects the heat, it lowers in temperature until it gets to the saturated state where liquid and vapor both exist. It then goes through the saturated state, it's, and it's where it's rejecting most of its heat from in that saturated state. On the picture here, it's smaller, but it's actually a decent amount of that coil. All right. It then continues to reject heat until it turns into a complete liquid and it condenses into a high pressure, high temperature liquid refrigerant, and then the temperature decrease between the end of the saturation point and where it comes out of that condenser indoor coil is the subcooling. It then goes through the metering device. It ends up bypassing the metering device. It goes through it, but it is not metered. Okay, so it's going, say, backwards. All right, so that metering device is inactive. It then goes through the filter dryer as a subcooled liquid and that filter dryer should be a bi-flow filter dryer capable of going in two different directions with refrigerant flow. It then goes through the liquid lines all the way out to the outdoor unit again. Then the low pressure, low temperature liquid refrigerant hits the metering device right in front of the service valve and it turns into a low pressure, low temperature liquid refrigerant. It's actually about 80% liquid, 20% flash gas because the refrigerant is going to want to expand just to be able to exert some pressure on this lower pressure area. All right, but we're going to refer to it as the low pressure, low temperature liquid refrigerant. It's then going to go ahead and absorb temperature from the outside air until it turns into the saturated state. So it's going to absorb more and more heat from the outside air until it gets to that saturated state where liquid and vapor both exist at the same time. And the saturated state is where it's able to absorb most of the energy, all right? It's actually wider or larger than the picture uh, is able to show. Then it turns into a vapor refrigerant, okay? After it, after it absorbs energy and gets out of the saturated state, it then turns into a complete vapor, and then the temperature increase right after it exits the saturated state until it exits the evaporator coil, which is the outdoor coil, that is called the superheat. All right, and then it continues as a superheated, low pressure, low temperature vapor refrigerant through, and then it goes to the reversing valve, and, it, and then it comes out through the pure suction, which is the middle line, and then it goes into the accumulator as a low pressure, low temperature vapor refrigerant, the accumulator's job is to store any excess liquid refrigerant and make sure that if there is no superheat coming from the outdoor coil, maybe it's extremely cold or maybe it's frosted on the coils or maybe defrost has not started yet and it's just not able to absorb enough heat from the outside air, what the accumulator is doing is making sure that there is no liquid refrigerant heading into the compressor. Okay, so. So the accumulator will have a variable amount of uh, refrigerant in that bottle depending on the outside temp and how well that outdoor uh, heat exchanger, the evaporator, is actually absorbing heat. So the low pressure, low temperature vapor refrigerant enters into the accumulator and 
the outdoor coil should be able to get some type of superheat, okay, which is a temperature increase in vapor form after the saturated point. So as long as that happens, it's going to have low pressure, low temperature vapor refrigerant heading into the accumulator, and then you're going to have low temperature, low pressure vapor refrigerant coming from the accumulator into the compressor. As well, at the bottom of the accumulator, there's a little orifice there. Uh, what that job is to do there is to pick up any liquid or oil that's in the bottom of that and meter it in slowly into that suction line. Okay, so it's, it's actually sucking the liquid and the oil through that little orifice and mixing it so it's mainly vapor just going into that compressor and some of the oil. All right, so, so that's what's actually happening in that accumulator. So it's trying to store extra liquid refrigerant and be able to maintain a steady vapor only heading into the compressor as well as making sure the oil is getting back to the compressor. All right, and then the cycle starts all over again. Low pressure vapor comes in, high pressure, high temperature vapor comes out of the compressor. All right, so now we're gonna move on to cooling mode. We're gonna take a look at the superheat and subcooling that's occurring in the coils there. Um, basically what would change this uh, direction of flow, the refrigerant, will be for most major manufacturers besides Root and Ream, you're just powering 24 volts to that reversing valve and you're changing the refrigerant direction. So now we're going to go ahead and take a look at cooling mode. So what we have is we have a, a low pressure, low temperature vapor refrigerant going into the compressor. It then comes out of the compressor as a high pressure, high temperature vapor refrigerant. All right, so the compressor's job is to raise pressure, which therefore temperature will follow pressure. So now we have high pressure, high temperature vapor refrigerant at its hottest point in the entire system right there. It's called the discharge line. It then goes through the reversing valve and is still considered the discharge line. It's the high pressure, high temperature vapor refrigerant. It then goes into the outdoor coil, which in this case could be the condenser coil because we're in cooling mode. It then rejects heat and vapor, okay? It continues to reject heat and lower in temperature until it turns into the saturated state, where liquid and vapor both exist at the same time. It then turns into a complete liquid, okay? And then it continues to reject heat and lower the temperature of the liquid refrigerant until it comes out at the service valve. The temperature decrease in liquid form between right after the saturated state, right where it turns into a liquid and all the way down by the service valve, that the temperature difference between those two is called the subcooling. And that's how we check refrigerant systems, uh, check the refrigerant charge of a system in cooling mode that has a thermostatic expansion valve at the evaporator coil. All right, so then it goes into the service valve and through the non-active metering device. So regardless of where that metering device is located at on a heat pump, um, you know, it's going to flow around it and through it. So it's not active at this point. It's kind of like a bypass there. All right, so it's going around and through the metering device in a non-active state. It's then still a high pressure, high temperature liquid refrigerant, even though it's rejected heat in the outdoor coil. It then goes through the filter dryer where it collects any contaminants and any water vapor. Remember, the filter dryer's job is to mainly hold water vapor, and it has a fixed capacity. You don't want water uh, mixing with the refrigerant oils because it can turn into alcohol and acids. So then it continues to go through as a high pressure, high temperature liquid refrigerant and it hits the metering device. In this case, the metering device is a thermostatic expansion valve. The thermostatic expansion valve's job is to maintain a certain amount of superheat across the evaporator coil. So the metering device right there, we have a pressure drop right there. It turns the, low, the uh, high pressure, high temperature liquid refrigerant into a 80% liquid, 20% flash gas by reducing the pressure. So as we know, temperature follows that, okay? So it then starts to absorb heat from the house. It then continues to absorb heat until it turns into a saturated state where liquid and vapor both exist. That's where it's able to store most of this, um, this heat from that it's absorbing from the house and that phase change from, from liquid to vapor. It then turns into a complete vapor, okay, and it continues to absorb heat until it comes out of the evaporator coil. So this is a heat, in this case, it's a heat pump, and that will be considered the indoor coil, okay, but, but since we're in cooling mode, that is the evaporator coil at this point. So right where it comes out of the saturated state at, it turns into a complete vapor, and it increases in temperature by absorbing the heat in the house until it comes out right out at the evaporator coil, 
and, and the temperature difference, the temperature increase in vapor form is called the superheat. It then continues through to the service valve and at the service valve, we that's where we typically measure total superheat. Okay, so right in the middle of the evaporator coil where it, the saturated state is, right after it comes out of that as a complete vapor, the temperature increase from there all the way over to the service valve, that's called the total superheat. And so we typically measure that actual temperature within a few inches of the service valve. So then we continue as a low pressure, low temperature vapor refrigerant through the reversing valve and goes into the accumulator. The accumulator's job is to make sure that the compressor does not have any liquid getting into the vapor compressor. So then it goes through the uh, accumulator as a low pressure, low temperature vapor refrigerant and continues as the same and goes into the compressor. Inside the accumulator, it might be able to pick up some more oil if there's any oil left on the bottom of the accumulator. All right, so then we have low pressure, low temperature vapor refrigerant coming back into the compressor and the sequence starts all over again. All right, well, I hope that helped. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.